hi welcome back to my channel thank you for coming again um nice to see you to see you nice okay those of you who don't know what that is obviously that means you're not from the uk or you're just you just you're just dry anyway <laughs> i'm joking okay so thank you for coming back um this video look at me brain freezing why am i always do you know what actually jokes aside they do have something called chemo brain and you know at first i just thought these people love to exaggerate but i'm finding myself just freezing and not remembering stuff it's genuinely a side effect like an after effect of when you've had chemotherapy call it a chemo brain you forget stuff and you just forget how to talk and <laughs> it's so annoying it's so annoying it makes you i'm like make it sound a bit it makes me look stupid but seriously google it if you don't believe me or ask people who've gone through it you have this complete just uh moment so that keeps happening on my videos and i look back i'm just like what's wrong with me and i just have to remember you know it's just it's just not cool it's just not cool but hopefully it will go away i i heard one day when i was in the chemo session that the lady she had come back unfortunately she got it again so that was her coming back for the second time after i think about five years her cancer came back but she was saying that it lasts it can last up to two years so i'm thinking i can't hey 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 i can't be doing this i cannot be doing this because it's really deep i remember one day not too long ago in fact i was meeting my friend i was supposed to meet my friend kira hey i was supposed to be coming to kira um why could i not find my keys my car keys i was looking everywhere for them i was oh if i could tell you the level of annoyance because for me my husband was just jamming there he wasn't trying to help me he was just like oh what's my hmm? what's wrong what's wrong anyway yeah when you watch this like yeah that's what you were like mister you weren't trying to help me find my keys i couldn't find my keys anyway i was getting so wound up i was oh who you could ever if you could ever but anyway hmm, apparently that could be not only just the side effects of chemo but also the drugs tamoxifen that i'm taking as well i can't always see it but my mum snitched on you mister she told me that you told her so now i know that you think that i'm suffering from memory loss but you're not telling me i don't think it's that bad but it does i do realize sometimes i have brain freeze anyway that was just a long side note back to the original um reason why i'm recording this and please bear in mind at me boom 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 tapping to reinforce the point i'm raising awareness for 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 cancer especially well i'm not saying especially because it happens to everybody but i've realized the african caribbean community when i tried to youtube when i found out my diagnosis it was really poorly reported they don't really know and also the under 30s under 35s it's it's almost as if there's like a massive gap every time that someone who's under 35 gets cancer it's like oh wow they have cancer and they're so young so clearly we need to be raising awareness because it happens more often than people want to you know more, more, more often than doctors are expecting it to so there must be something that's underlying so please even though i use a lot of humor that is just me anyway um it is a serious topic and it's a serious issue and i just want to be able to use these videos to you know sh help somebody out there um so back 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 to my point the original reason why i'm filming this look at me i'm terrible i'm so sorry i have to keep apologizing for the fact that i just try to stay on track but my brain doesn't work like that i can't just talk about one thing without going off on the tangent anyway um right snapping snap 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 back my ina. snap back um this video is about radiotherapy and what to expect and once again i have to say that i can only talk about my own experience and i can only say what i went through it might be different for you but if it's not i'm glad that i'm able to help you um you know in advance so i had radiotherapy for pretty much the entire month of january and the only days that you don't go in are saturday and sunday but you go in every day um and so before you have 
the radiotherapy they bring you in um to do a lot of scans and so forth mri scans and cat scans and so i think that's the right thing if i'm remembering correctly it's been over two years and i'm i have had so many tests and scans and tests and scans that sometimes i mix up which is for what but i know that they lay you down on this if you've ever had a MRI scan, you know that the machine that they, is like a little tubey type machine. Well, it's kind of similar. You lay down and what they did for me, they had to pinpoint, so they measure precisely where your tumour was and that is the area that they start radiating. And so they give you, I had four permanent markers. When they said that after I was sitting there, I thought, that's fully a tattoo if it's permanent and you use the needle with a bit of ink and you pricked me four times. That's a full blown tattoo. Anyway, they gave me four tattoos. One, two, I think one was up here, three and four. Okay, so that when they have their, their lasers, it's kind of like a laser. It's not a laser to burn you, but you know, like a, you know, those red lasers so that you can measure things. They put it on your body. They, they measured that. Um, they use the points to measure you so that when you have your arms up, they measure that too. You have to lay in the same position every single time so that the radiotherapy is hitting each point precisely. So if you are 0.1 millimeter out, it doesn't work. Um, the screen doesn't allow them to, to, radiate, to radiate you. So that's why they had to do that. So they did that the first, the first meeting. Obviously, they do the consent forms. They tell you what's going to happen. They tell you what happens afterwards. And they ask you if you agree and all that kind of shebang and blah, blah, all the boring stuff. But actually, it might not be boring to somebody else. So let me do that properly. Um, your first session, um, you have a, a nurse, a radiologist, I should say, actually, um, go through paperwork with you and she explains what the process is going to be. She tells you, of which ward you, you, you're expected to be on and that they are going to take pictures of you so that they can have it because every time every day you go in you might have a different team in my case I think I had about four or five different teams working with me so they need to make sure that everybody has the same information so that's why they draw on you and they measure precisely so that the next person can have the same paperwork will be able to do the lineup exactly the same as a previous person um so that was the first session that i went to um after the, the tattoo the tattoo stuff and then they said oh yeah okay we'll see you tomorrow the following day um they tell you get changed you know leave the bottoms on keep top put your dressing in, leave the dressing opening to the front and then go in so you lay on the bed and as I said, the arm rests. Those of you who've had a child, you know when they put your feet in those little round things? They have the same thing for your arm and they had the exact reading. So my eye had to be elevated to a certain point here and the same over there. So you're laying like this for a bit, you lay flat and then they check your markings. So you hear them saying, um... Are you good on that side? Yeah, I'm good on that side. Da, 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 da. Sideways, both ways, up ways. All these little terminologies. I used to sit there like, what are they talking about? And then they have to make sure that the floor was at four centimetres. Everything had to be exact. So that was what the process was. Well, that's, that's the process that takes the longest, to be honest, is them putting you in the exact position that you were and the floor the same. And then they line you up and they say, OK, we'll see you in a minute. And you hear beep for when they leave the room. And you hear, mm, or maybe that's just me. I can hear this mm, sound. They, the, you can't feel anything, to be quite honest. It's a bit cold sometimes in the room because obviously you've got no top on. So you're kind of just like, oh, hurry up. And you, you don't want to move because I'm thinking, I don't, these laser things, because I had to put my chin up. So make sure you put your chin up. I was thinking, if I, I went to, you know, when you want to sneeze. I thought, you know what, that sneeze better just hold itself down because I don't want this laser to go right through me. I was just like this. I was 
dead still. I, I think they give you a little bit of leeway, but they don't tell you because they don't want you to move. But uh, anyway, in any case, I didn't move. So they laser you, they irradiate you, and it only, it, it probably doesn't even last a whole minute to be quite frank. The whole process, probably about 20 minutes, just because they need to make sure they align you properly, but the actual radiotherapy is the quickest thing ever. You don't feel anything, and as I said, I went through the whole, pretty much the whole month of January. Um, it's the, but you do notice that your skin gets darker. So if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen my picture. If you don't follow me on Instagram, just follow me on Instagram. I'll put the link below. Or I'll add it up here. So you can follow my Insta, follow my Insta, follow, follow, follow. Problems. Maina has problems. No, she doesn't. Okay, but yeah, the side effects are pretty much... You can see here, this is part of the radiotherapy. And, and they do... But it was down here. The actual tumour was about here. But they do this whole section. So obviously, I'm not showing my baby on camera but i will show as much as i can if you can see <laughs> mm. okay i'm wearing a dress so it's not permitting more than this <laughs> okay you can see where the skin gets darker oh there's my there's my scar but it is it is lightening up a lot there's a few patches right right this is what i wanted to get okay so they say to you it's a bit like a sunburn now <laughs> of course <laughs> telling an african person is like a sunburn now i'm not saying that we don't get sunburn i'm just saying like it's not as common for an afro-caribbean individual to have a sunburn so i was like oh okay so i can only imagine because obviously talking to my non-caucasian not non-caucasian to my non-afro-caribbean friends they would say oh my gosh my skin's sore so i can i can gather what they meant but it's like uh oh, thanks for that guys i'm so gonna know what you mean anyway it's like a sunburn and then you have to make sure that your moisturizer area and that you don't have extreme like you know hot showers and you keep it out of the sun <laughs> when she said that to me i was like keep it out of the sun <laughs> I live in England. <laughs> I would love to see the sun any sometime soon. Any day. Someone. Where's the sun? No sun. Anyway, she keep it out of the sun. I mean, kind of was chuckling. And I thought, yeah, that's that's definitely gonna happen. But you have to make sure you moisturize it, and that you try and avoid like rubbing stuff on there because it it gets sore after. Like I said, I personally don't feel anything during the radiotherapy. I felt it afterwards, in like right towards the end. So maybe pff, the last five sessions is when I started noticing that the skin felt a little bit hot and it was just re a bit painful. But it's not like, oh, I'm bearable. I can't move. No, it's not that extreme. It's a bit sore. It's a bit like, okay. It's a bit annoying. It's If anything, it's more annoying than painful in my my case don't quote me don't go to the doctors if you don't start feeling something and say i watched this young lady on youtube and she said that no it's 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 in my case um but the skin starts peeling off so obviously when you have a shower so i was like what's this random black business like oh, it's actually my skin is just peeling off it's shedding 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 anyway it's just yeah that was that is just the main point really about radiotherapy for me um they they did say that it could cause hair thinning but because of the order that i had it in i know some people well, i didn't know before i just recently find out found out that some people have it in a different order so i had surgery then i had the chemotherapy then i had the radiotherapy but depending on the size of your tumor you might actually have radiotherapy chemotherapy and then surgery or i think more to the point they would probably do chemotherapy first, then the radiotherapy, and then a surgery. So I didn't realise that other people had it in different different, um, different orders. So for me, they had taken out the tumour, then they did the chemo to try and kill any cells that were remaining, then they did the radiotherapy to add that on top to make it, you know, it's like a foolproof, then the tablets as well, supposed to be foolproof. So that, that yeah, for me, that was, that was it really for the radiotherapy. It was, um, yeah... 
I was saying, you see, you see this? Me and my points, they do come back eventually. In terms of hair thinning, um, I don't, I can't quite say that I noticed this because I already, I already have no hair. So it's not as if I'm gonna notice if the hair starts to thin because I ain't got none. So it was a bit like, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you if that's true or not. The thing that is, is, um, tiring is the fact that you have to go there every day so it's more the waking up in the morning and traveling and traveling back that's what will take it out of you if anything at all but really you can see i've the last session for me was the 31st of the 31st of january and we are mid february now so you know you can you can see it's not like <gasps> I'm so tired. No, no, it's it's not. But I have to keep saying that's in my case because everybody is different. So it could be very, very different for somebody else. So um, in terms of just, you know, dealing with the whole cancer situation, I think everybody's different. <laughs> Look at me. I'm going to get a Nobel Prize for the most intelligent individual. Here I am stating the obvious. Uh, obviously everyone's different, but I'm just saying, um, take it in your stride. Contact me. I, I, like I said in my other videos, I'll give you advice, you know. I'll help you out if you need any pointers, okay. But my next video that I'm going to say, I'm going to show, is probably going to be about just my everyday life and going like after chemo after radiotherapy and i have filmed a clip of when i went back for my follow-up appointment of course i forgot my camera so it was just a reaction of what they want to do when they see you after you finish radiotherapy this was a couple of days ago i went back to the hospital so um you know they do they do follow-up appointments and so forth which i haven't been to yet but i'm assuming it's going to be like mammograms and um mri scans and so forth um so if you have any questions or anything that you want me to talk about please inbox me message me find me on one of my social media pages and holla um and i will you know try and film that and get back to you but i am going to be talking about you know hair loss and dealing with that and trying to make yourself look as normal as possible and acting and feeling as normal as possible so that people don't even notice that you're going through something until you post it on Facebook and they're like what we would never been able to tell yeah how do you make yourself look and act and feel as normal as possible even though you're going through um you know a tough time which is basically battling battling cancer um but I am gonna say thank you for coming again and viewing my page don't forget to subscribe don't forget to share because you just never know who's out there i always think nobody really knew about me so you may have um, even a member in your own family that's going through this and just sharing it would be a source of encouragement for them so in the meantime for the time being take it easy make sure you check out my next one and thank you for watching me. Take care. And remember, enjoy life. Peace. I've just come out of that place. An hour. They made me wait an hour for a, what, 10 minute consultation? It wasn't even 10 minutes. It wasn't even 10 minutes. Basically, they were just doing a follow-up. They just wanted to find out what the effects were for me for taking the tamoxifen which I'm on and what the radiotherapy um what the effects of radiotherapy were whether or not my skin had broken and etc etc then they want to put me on something else a uh, Zoldorex or something see see can't pay attention I just can't pay attention I don't know I can't remember what the name of the thing is but basically the purpose of it is to suppress ovary production so you have an injection underneath your skin they said to me every month and it stops the production of you know female hormones 
So, um, oh wait, I've got the paperwork. <laughs> you see, what's it called? Zolodex. Zolodex. Yeah. Hormones or something. Yeah, it's to interfere with the way hormones are produced. But yeah, Zolodex is the name of it, what they want to give me. Um, they almost wanted a decision now. So I said, um, yeah, I'll get back to you. I'm going to call you on Monday to let you know. They're like, are you definitely going to call us? I said, yes, 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 yes. Because obviously they've got that track record of me just not really, yeah, just running away and stuff. So that was that. I sat there for an hour for this. And they're still going on about the age. You're still young. Come on. That doesn't mean anything. It obviously doesn't mean anything. So anyway, I'm going to carry on letting you know what happens when I get my proper video camera. Okay. Speak to you soon.